Hello, everyone. This is Justin Vogel. I'm the chief negotiator for SJEA. The bargaining team has been working all year diligently on the entire contract, including a compensation package that was uh, agreed to about a month ago. We made a video to explain the complexities of that compensation package. We have an issue here that also calls for video. And this is an MOU, a memorandum of understanding regarding teachers covering other teachers classes because of a substitute shortage. So we've been working with the district since the fall when we first realized that this was going to be more of an issue this year than, than, than is typical. And so you'll see an effective date of January 6th, that's the beginning of the second semester, uh, because by the time we had reached the winter break, we had convinced the district that, um, that we needed some sort of agreement to compensate people for the extra work. So, uh, Let's start with number one. In all cases, uh, we're going to try to uh, you, be equitable in the substitute assignments uh, for coverage, and volunteers will be sought first. So there we go. Volunteers will be sought first, and the reason that it's not that it doesn't say that it's entirely voluntary is because the the example I would give is for elementary school. If there are three teachers of a, of a grade level and one of those teachers is out unexpectedly and a substitute is not uh, available, then the principal likely has very few options and would split those students among the other two classes. So uh, to say that it's entirely voluntary would, would not be entirely correct. So we, uh, we, but we wanted voluntary language in there and we were able to accomplish that. In the second, uh, bu a bullet here, number two, classroom teachers and media specialists who have students placed into their room. So this includes the elementary scenario I just described, but also, um, you know, uh, physical education teachers uh, who have uh, maybe a gym or something, uh, the gym as, a, as, as part of their classroom, uh, students might be placed into there or the media center. Those uh, personnel are not, um, they're not covering necessarily during their planning but they are covering students that they wouldn't normally cover because of a teacher absence and a substitute shortage. So they're going to receive an hour or two hours of their rate of pay. So the average rate of pay for instructional personnel in our county is about $33. Uh, but of course, your, your rate of pay might vary from that. In number three, we have the scenario where someone gives up their planning period to cover other classes. So uh, potentially this is, you know, uh, you have one planning period per day. So uh, if, a, if you cover one class, that would be, you would, you would pay, get paid for an hour. And if you cover two uh, block schedule, there's one high school on block schedule, you would receive two hours. It's double the time. So in number four, associate teachers have lead teachers. And if the lead teacher is out, then the associate teacher will uh, still have their uh, their students that they have every day, they will just be without their lead teacher. So they will receive some compensation as well, depending on how, for how long they go without a sub. And then number five uh, has to do with how we're going to process payment. Again, uh, this goes into effect retro to January 6th and school-based administrators have been, um, tracking the the coverage. And so uh, all we have to do is, as individuals, is work with our school-based administrators. They have the data and uh, we can get people paid going back to January 6th. And of course, this is good through the last day of school, June 2nd of this year. So I hope this answered some, uh, some of your questions and clarified what this memorandum of understanding covers. I do have one thing to note. We have, um, I have to be honest with you, there's, there's a piece missing here that we're not real thrilled about. And that is the non-classroom instructional personnel like uh, such as deans, ILCs, and testing coordinators. Unfortunately, the district and, and us, and, and we see differently the, the duties of these jobs. The district says that uh, these positions have uh, in other duties as assigned clause and that covering classes counts as other other duties as assigned. 
Uh, we believe we fought vehemently. Um, we disagree vehemently and we fought um, very hard to get these people some compensation, but we were not able to at the end of the day. Uh, but we, we, like I said, we started this in the fall. We've been negotiating this for months. And so we, we come to an agreement. Uh, it's not perfect. It does leave a, a few people out. And I personally don't love that. But at the end of the day, we have to move forward. And this is the deal that we were able to to get to. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to the bargaining team or uh, SJA President Michelle Dillon, and we can get answers to you. Thanks for listening.